Welcome to isdakla.com. Today we are discussing the most famous biography of Charles Darwin. He was born in 1809 and died in 1882. Charles Darwin, the originator of the theory of organic evolution by means of natural selection, was born in Shrewsbury, England, on February 12, 1809, on exactly the same day that Abraham Lincoln was born. At 16, he entered the University of Edinburgh to study medicine. However, he found both medicine and anatomy dull subjects. And after a while, transferred to Cambridge to study for a ministry. At Cambridge, he found such activities as writing and shooting far more agreeable than his studies. Nevertheless, he managed to impress one of his professors sufficiently to be recommended for the position of naturalist on the expository voyage of HMS Beagle. His father at first objected to Charles accepting the appointment, feeling that such a trip would simply be a further excuse for the young man to delay settling down to serious work. Fortunately, the elder Darwin was persuaded to give his consent to the trip for this was to prove one of the most rewarding ocean voyage in the history of Western science. Darwin set sail on the Beagle in 1831 at the age of 22. In the course of the next five years, the Beagle sailed around the world, skirting the coast of South America at the at a leisurely pace, exploring the lonely Galapagos Iceland and visiting other islands of the Pacific, the Indian Ocean and the South Atlantic. During the long course of voyage, Darwin saw many natural wonders, visited primitive tribes, discovered large number of fossils, and absorbed an enormous number of plant and animal species. Furthermore, he looked voluminous notes on everything that he observed. These notes provided the basis for almost all his later work. From them, he derived many of his principal ideas as well as the immense wealth of evidence by which he made his theories prevail. Darwin returned home in 1836, and over the next 20 years he published a series of books which established his reputation as one of the leading biologists in England. As early as 1837, Darwin became convinced that animal and plant species were not facts, but had evolved over a course of geological, geologic history. At that time, however, he had no ideas what might be the cause of such evolution. In 1838, however, he read an essay on the principle of population by Thomas Malthus, and that provided him with the vital clue to his notion of natural selection through competition for survival. But even after Darwin had formulated the principle of natural selection, he did not rush to present his ideas in print. He realized that his theory was bound to arouse a good deal of opposition, and he therefore spent a long time carefully assembling the evidence and marshalling the argument in favor of his hypothesis. He wrote an outline of his theory as early as in 1842, 
and by 1844 was working on a full-length book. However, in June 1858, when Darwin was still aiding to and revising his great work, he received a manuscript from the Alfred Russell Wallace, a British naturalist who was at the time in the East Indies, outlining Wallace's th own theory of evolution. In every essential point, Wallace's theory was the same as Darwin's. Wallace had developed his theory completely independently and had sent his manuscript to Darwin in order to obtain the opinion and comments of an established scientist before publishing it. It was an embarrassing situation which could easily have developed into an unpleasant battle over priority. Instead, Wallace's paper and an outline of Darwin's book were presented as a joint paper before a scientific body the following month. Oddly enough, that presentation did not arouse a great deal of attention. However, Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, published the following year, created a furor. In fact, it is probable that no scientific books ever published has been so widely and vigorously discussed by scientists and laymen alike is on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. The argument was still going strong in 1871 when Darwin published The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex. The book which propounded the idea that man was descended from ape-like creatures added still more fuel to the raging controversy. But Darwin himself took no part in the public debates and his theories. For no, for, sorry, for one thing, he had been in bad health ever since the voyage of the Beagle probably the result of a recruitment ailment Chagas disease which he had contracted from insect bites in the South America. Furthermore, the partisans of evolution possessed in Thomas H. Huxley, a skilled debater and a vigorous defender of Darwin theories, the large majority of scientists had accepted the basic correctness of Darwin theories by his time he died sorry by the time he died in 1882 Darwin was not the originator of the idea of the evolution of species quite a few persons had postulated the theory before him including the French naturalist Jean Lamarck and Charles Owen's grandfather Erasmus Darwin, but these hypotheses had never gained the acceptance of the scientific world because their proponents were unable to give convincing explanation of the means by which the by which evolution occurred. Darwin's great contribution was that he was able to present not only a mechanism, natural selection by which evolution could occur but also a large quantity of convincing evidence to support his hypothesis. It is, worth not, mm, sorry, it is worth noting that Darwin's theory was formulated without any reliances on genetic theory or indeed any knowledge of it and Darwin's and hey, no one knew anything about the way in which particular characteristics characteristics were passed on from one generation to the next. Although Gregor Mendel was working out the laws of heredity during the same year that Darwin was writing and publishing his epoch-making books, Mendel's work which supplements Darwin's so perfectly was almost totally ignored until the 1970s. 